Thank you, and thank you to the organizer of the conference. Uh, as Zolt told us, uh, in this first session, we're talking about epidemiology, but I think we're also talking about variation, and I think that will come out uh, not only in uh, our experience, what we're seeing across the Atlantic uh, in the United States, but also in how we looked at this very similar topic uh, uh, compared to our colleagues in uh, the UK and uh, in Germany. And uh, I have no conflicts to disclose except uh, that much of the data was obtained from Auxilium Pharmaceuticals, now Endo Pharmaceuticals, but uh, we received no financial support. Our null hypothesis was that the FDA approval of collagenase Clostridium histolyticum, CCH, uh, or Zioflex, Ziopex, will not significantly change the treatment in the United States for patients with Dupuytren's contracture over, uh, as measured by the number of patients diagnosed uh, or the rates of open surgery and uh, needle aperonotomy. Uh, and so how did we do this? Uh, well, uh, a little bit different than our colleagues, uh, we used a uh, company, uh, IMS Health, uh, that, it, uh, that generates a catalog of, uh, for all types of uh, diagnoses of the insurance claims that are made across the United States. And so, uh, this is not a complete log, but it represents public and private payers in the United States and represents in their database about 75% of the U.S. market. Uh, and so we queried, uh, we, we were not uh, up to ICD-10, as our colleagues in the U.K., uh, but ICD-9 diagnoses for Dupuytren's contracture, as you can see here, and used the procedural codes that are uh, recorded in the United States for listing uh, procedures, either fasciotomy or fasciectomy, and our period we looked at was from January 2007 through the end of 2013, uh, remembering that CCH was FDA approved in February 2010, so a reasonable period of time both before and after the CCH approval. Uh, uh, we then extrapolated that 75% data to 100% of the U.S. population because we had from Auxilium Pharmaceuticals uh, clearinghouse, we had the actual number of vials sold across the United States, and we made the assumption that all vials sold were utilized. Data was collected on a monthly basis and analyzed both monthly and quarterly. Uh, interestingly enough, in our results, one of the uh, things that we noted is there has become much more awareness of Dupuytren's contracture over this time period. And so uh, over that same time period, as you can see, there was a very significant increase, almost 70 percent increase, in the number of patients reported with the diagnosis of Dupuytren's disease. We were unable to drill down as to whether this represented specialists, primary care physicians, et cetera, but, but nevertheless, overall, there was an enormous increase in the awareness of Dupuytren's disease. In terms of procedures, there was a similar but not as large increase, almost 25 percent uh, increase over that time period in the total number of procedures uh, identified for Dupuytren's contracture. Uh, when we start to drill down into what exactly was done uh, in terms of surgery over this time period, we see open surgery, uh, fasciotomy or fasciectomy, decreasing by almost uh, 20 percent. Uh, and, and that is depicted on the slide as the red uh, line, and the green is the total number of procedures. If we then add back in or add in CCH, which is in orange, uh, and the introduction of CCH, as you uh, might imagine, is this line uh, uh, period here, uh, and needle aponeurotomy, uh, quite clearly CCH goes from zero at the onset uh, and increases significantly, a needle aponeurotomy is uh, uh, demonstrated down, down here. Uh, CCH introduced, uh, uh, increased significantly since introduction, uh, but needle aponeurotomy uh, did not appear to increase over that time period. If we were to break it down by percentage, which is an interesting way to look at it, uh, uh, the uh, open surgery is here. CCH is in orange, needle apparotomy is in black, uh, and by the end of 2013, CCH had grown to about 30 percent of the U.S. treatment for Dupuytren's, and needle apparotomy stayed in the teens at about 12 percent at the final time period. Interestingly enough, uh, and this will come as no surprise to all of us in the audience who treat Dupuytren's and Dupuytren's surgery, there was a significant seasonal variation in the reporting 
of Dupuytren's treatment and Dupuytren surgery, and I am uh, marking uh, the winter months here, November through February, uh, and there was a statistically significant difference in the number of surgeries that were performed and the number of total Dupuytren's procedures performed during the winter months as our patients want to be manually active. Um, so conclusions. Uh, the diagnosis of Dupuytren's contracture has increased significantly uh, with increased awareness. Uh, by the end of 2013, 42% of treatment was no longer open surgery. CCH use uh, uh, increased significantly, and this correlated with the decrease in open surgery. Uh, but the uh, needle apneurotomy procedures remained relatively steady, and we saw a significant seasonal variation in open surgery that we did not see in the so-called less invasive, in quotation marks, treatments of needle neuroapneurotomy and CCH. Thank you. Thank you very much.